What's up everybody and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at the all new 2025 Toyota Camry. This is an XLE finished in midnight black. MSRP is $36,600. Big shout out to Flow Toyota of Statesville for providing the all new Camry for today's video. Take a look at their website linked down below. Underneath the hood of the all new 2025 Toyota Camry, you're only gonna see a hybrid engine available, even running on zero W8 oil, which is a little interesting. This has a 2.5 liter inline four cylinder with of course that hybrid system. Front wheel drive cars have net horsepower at 225, torque is about 163, and it runs with an ECVT transmission. Overall curb weight is around 3,600 pounds, has a 13 gallon fuel tank, and you're looking at 48 miles per gallon in the city with 47 out on the highway. The overall length is 193.5 inches with the wheelbase at 111.2, width is 72.4, and height is 56.9 inches. Taking a look at the styling with the all new 2025 Toyota Camry, this is definitely a pretty nice upgrade from the previous years. You got a very sharp and sporty style to it, Really good looking set of LED headlights. You can see the nice light in the center wrapping around that bodywork. I love how that front bumper portion cuts into those headlights. You got your Toyota badge, an upper grille with some openings, and the XLE is gonna feature a nice aluminum colored silver grille. Has a nice contrast to the black paintwork, unlike the XSE, which will have the body colored. Has some nice horizontal slots, plenty of cooling to the engine, nice contours to it. Then you're gonna see an opening to allow some airflow into those wheels. Got a nice sporty front bumper with some sharp lines throughout it and I really like how the front bumper cuts into the hood with these really sharp lines fading towards that windshield. Overall this is the spec you want if you want an XSE but don't like the body colored grille. So this is a pretty cool look. You're gonna see a nice design for these two-tone wheels, machine silver, gloss black, and then you can also see a nice sharp body line throughout the front wheel arch. Got a sharp line in the lower side skirt one prominent body line throughout the side profile. And then you can see body colored mirror caps with a little bit of chrome trim, body colored door handles, and then all chrome trim surrounding the windows with blacked out B and C pillars. Smooth roof with a shark fin antenna up and back. And then the side profile is pretty typical to every Camry. Looks like what you would expect from a midsize sedan. Now in back, there's gonna be some sharp lines cutting into these taillights, which has a nice look smooth look for the rear end with chrome on the Toyota logo and then Camry is all in chrome with a black trim piece connecting these taillights. Nice LED design, body color for the lower portion of the rear bumper. No exhaust tips for this, this is more of a luxury spec comparing it to an XSE. Got all your badging, backup camera, the hybrid logo as well, and it finishes off to be a pretty clean looking sedan. Moving on to the key fob, we get lock, unlock your trunk, and then it says Camry on the backside. If I go ahead and lock the car, keeping the key fob in my pocket, I can just grab the door handle, it will automatically unlock, and we can view the interior. This one's gonna have a nice gray interior, really contrasts well to the black trim. Along the door panel, you have a soft touch plastic up above, and I love this material. It's kind of like a fabric Alcantara type material with this cool diamond pattern to it, nice texture. I love the silver trim cutting through it all. You got some padding for your armrest with a gray stitching, and then you can see your grab handle along with all those controls. Storage down below, and then power seats. On the seats themselves, you're gonna get the perforated leather throughout the center with the smooth design on the outside, and then on your back bolsters, you're gonna see more perforations, and then this really cool smooth fabric type material. It's a really luxurious spec for sure. I'm really impressed. On the steering wheel, you're gonna see it finished off in black, and then you have that same contrast gray stitching. And then now inside the 2025 Camry XLE, keep my foot on the brake, we can fire it up. Being a hybrid, the engine won't necessarily turn on. Got your Toyota badge in the center of the steering wheel, a few controls for the center screen, and then you can see some Bluetooth and audio controls, cruise control all over on the right side. Taking a look at the center screen, it's a full digital screen. You can scroll left and right and adjust a little bit of the information. If I go ahead and hit the OK icon, you're able to scroll through each of these three zones of the screen and adjust what you're gonna want. So pretty simple overall, you kind of get everything you're gonna need in this LCD screen. You're also gonna see on the back side of the steering wheel, we have the stock for the windshield wipers, turn signals over on the left side, and no paddle shifters for the XLE model. On the left side, we have automatic high beams, traction control, interior lighting, trunk, and fuel cap. More of this really cool textured material, one of your air vents, and then some smooth material across the dashboard. Passenger air vent has a really nice slot to it, fun design cutting into the navigation screen, and then you're gonna see more of this really nice material. Just really adds a touch of class to the Camry. 
For the infotainment screen, basically what you would expect on any modern Toyota. Very simple, you will have to set it up to get your nav. All the audio can pop up with Android Auto. For the car icon, you can toggle a few different adjustments for climate. You can go back into comfort for that heated steering wheel. Trip information will pop up as well. You have your history, MPG for the latest information. Then we also have vehicle alerts, if any. For all your settings, you can go through all sorts of different things within the car. And then if I pop it into reverse, you can see your nice backup camera. Pretty HD graphics overall. You can also zoom out. I wouldn't mind the screen filling out the entire screen, which would be a pretty cool touch for it. But nonetheless, still pretty nice. There's gonna be physical climate controls all down below with your heated seats, your air conditioning icon as well. You can toggle your temperature, fan speed, different zones, and then you can see your auto and off. Climate vents down below that with more USB ports in the lower section, wireless phone charging pad, and then all sorts of storage as well as cup holders throughout the center. Get a little bit of gloss black, nice leather design around the shift boot, and then our drive modes. You can go into your eco setting. You also have a normal mode and sport mode. There is an EV drive mode for parking lot speed if you have enough juice. So nice touch for slow speed driving. You're gonna see some more of this padding on the armrest, more of this contrast stitching. Actually almost looks like a green color. And then opening that up, you do have quite a lot of storage in the center. Glove box on the right side, pretty large bucket as expected. And then one last look at the interior. The XLE definitely is more on the luxury side while the XSE is on the sporty side, but definitely a nice price difference as well. Full headliner just finished in the gray. Sunroof is available. And then you can push this down. We have a nice sunglass holder, a few dome-like controls. Garage door buttons are underneath your mirror. And then we even have the dash cam installed. Moving on to the rear seat space, grabbing the door handle, open it up. Door panels fitted off kind of like the front. You're gonna see more of a plastic material and then just a vinyl color in the gray. You do have the same contrast stitching on your padded armrests, grab handle and storage. And then the seats are all nicely designed the same with the smooth and perforated leather large headrest as well. And then in the center, we can pull this down and you have a nice armrest with two cup holders. You're also gonna see some USB ports, climate vents, and then storage behind all these seats. And then hopping into the back seat with the 2025 Camry. So at five foot 11 sitting here in this midsize sedan, I have really good headroom as you can tell. Legroom, even with the seat at my height, I'm really comfortable. The seat cradles my legs nicely. I'm sinking into it pretty well. Wouldn't mind a little bit more lumbar support, but honestly, it's had a pretty good recline. The fact you have the air vents, you have dome lights up above, as well as these grab handles. And if you did opt for the full panoramic roof, it would come back to about here. So it's a pretty good backseat overall for a midsize. Can't complain for an adult. Kids definitely are gonna be nice back here. And then moving on to the trunk space, there's gonna be a button back here. We can manually lift that up. You got about 15 cubic feet of cargo space. You're gonna see how flat the load floor is. Nice cutouts on the left and right side. And then we can even lift this up. You got a spare tire with all of the equipment. From here, we can pull these manually for the rear seats. They're gonna fold down nicely to give you even more cargo area. And then going through the door, they're gonna fold down nice and flat. Pretty large opening into the trunk to really maximize the space the camera can offer for people as well as cargo. All right, so setting off now in the 2025 Camry XLE. So this is kind of like the luxury version, not quite as sporty as what the XSE is gonna have to offer. I love this interior. Being in here, it looks so cool, especially with the gray contrasting to the black, but then this cool like diamond pattern just looks really, really nice. So this is a little bit more comfortable feeling than the XSE, again, less sporty. So this one does feel like it rides just a little bit more refined, a little bit smoother rather than being like a sport tuned suspension. But this is really comfortable. The seats are nice and padded. You have a great view around, good visibility. I mean, this is literally just a really easy car to operate, nothing all too fancy. It's pretty quiet. You can hear the road just a little bit. You don't hear any wind noise though, just a little bit of road noise from the tires, I would say. But overall though, this is a pretty easy to drive car. It's definitely smooth and I really can't complain with just kind of the normal driving. Seats are definitely roomy too, headroom, legroom, all of that. I have no issues just getting comfortable in this car overall. And then the steering radius is pretty sharp, especially even being front wheel drive. It's easy to turn this. The steering wheel has enough feedback to where it's not just super lightweight and super floaty. So it's pretty easy to maneuver even going through a tight area. I mean, you can pinpoint this car really nice. Slow speed, like right now, we're actually driving in the EV setting. So I like how it, the hybrid system basically, it kind of goes back and forth between electric and gas. Like right now, this is all EV and it's really not gonna kick on the engine until I accelerate a little bit harder or a little bit higher in speed. 
So still EV, and there's the engine kicking in. Now you can hear the engine, I wouldn't say that's a bad thing, however you notice it compared to other hybrids I've noticed, but it is still pretty smooth the way it's integrated, and with the eCVT transmission, it's not just your belt driven like CVT that none of us like, it's actually a little bit better, more of a direct drive type of transmission, and that does help this get up and go off the line really nicely. So it's pretty peppy in the slow speed, just getting up to speed, and it doesn't just whine like your typical continuous variable. So overall, it seems like a pretty smooth driving car, incredible efficiency, really good comfort level. And honestly, this is just a pleasant place to be and not really too expensive for 36 grand. Seems like a heck of a good deal if you just want a nice overall car. So my honest thoughts now with the Toyota Camry. So this is the first time checking out the XLE. It's a pretty cool spec. This one isn't really all too sporty. You know, the XSE will give you a little spoiler, a little bit more sporty interior, the wheels, sport tuned suspension, the sport pedals, um, and a few other things, an exhaust tip, a little somewhat of a body kit. So this one's definitely toned down in style, but adds that luxury touch, a little bit of chrome. Uh, this interior again, looks super cool. I love the materials. So it kind of gives you a little bit different vibe, still being a top of the line car. So I think Toyota's done a pretty good job pricing the Camrys. Even an SE for low 30 grand seems like a bargain. This one right in the middle, it's not crazy equipped. A few of the XSEs I've done were 38 to 42 grand. So 36 grand seems like a really good bargain if you just want a nice normal family sedan. And this one does ride a little bit more luxurious to where this is a little bit smoother on the bumps, feels a little bit more plush. Still no luxury car, obviously, but you can just tell this one feels a little bit smoother to drive and is just a pleasant place to be. The efficiency is incredible. I mean, you're talking about 50 miles to the gallon, generally speaking, when you're driving around in this car, which is a really cool plus. Not many cars actually can give you that. So the fact that you can just daily drive this, rack up the miles, have a 600 mile range or something like that, you know, that is a pretty cool plus. The interior is also very simple. It's more on the minimalistic side. It's not ultra fancy. However, it gives you enough cool factor, I would say, to feel like a nice new car. Again, this all looks cool. The integration of the screen, I think is nice. And the fact that we have the physical climate controls, I think is a huge plus just to make it simple. I know Toyota buyers just like a car that's easy to use, no big deal. And that's where the new Camry is. It's easy to drive, it's easy to press the buttons. You don't have to really figure out how to use the technology in this car. So Toyota's done a good job on that. Now there's some pretty good competition from Hyundai and Honda, of course. Um, all priced pretty similarly. It really does depend on if you like more features, the reliability, pricing, things like that. So it's a great option for sure. There are other options out there that might have more features, less power though. So you kind of get a good blend with Toyota and given they've done hybrids for two, three decades now, you know, I would be pretty hopeful that this is going to be a very reliable hybrid system and you should be able to count on this car for a long, long time. Now the V6 is gone. A lot of owners do not like that. They miss it. Um, a lot of V6 owners have had, you know, two or 300,000 miles without really skipping a beat. We'll have to see as time goes on if this car can effectively hit those kind of miles without any issues. I'm hopeful, but again, you know, time will tell since this is a new car, we don't quite know. But overall, if you're looking for a nice, normal size family sedan with really good efficiency and just a modern car in general without being too crazy fancy, then the Camry is one of the benchmarks cars. It just is a really well-rounded, kind of giving you everything you're gonna want. But there's a full look at the XLE. First time checking out this trim level. Definitely a nice spec if you want a little touch of luxury. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Stay tuned for plenty more content. Big shout out to Flow Toyota of Statesville for providing this car for today's video. Take a look at their website linked below. And I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you.